on. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This May I So I Tell You? The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment I will introduce you to my wonderful guest Sarah Grant. But before that I would like to say thank you for watching this live at a later date as it means a lot to me connect with like-minded women. If you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I use angelic Reiki, future life regression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny and their reason for being here. Um, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform the present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Sarah Grant, who will be sharing her wisdom about the woman that wears the wrong colour and shape disappears, but the woman that wears the right colour and shape appears about her journey and how she works alongside others to help women and children love their life. Now, Sarah Grant is a personal stylist and coach who is passionate about empowering women 40 plus to look good and feel fabulous from the inside out from top to toe. Through her experience, she helps support many women, including volunteering for Look Good, Feel Better charity, which supports women and teenagers with visible side effects of cancer. With testimonials such as, until I went to Sarah, I had never thought about colours or personal image. I was constantly buying items that, end, that I ended up never wearing or not feeling comfortable in. Sarah changed all that. She showed me the colours that suited my complexion and lifted my look. I now wear colours that I would never have dreamed of wearing and I'm constantly getting compliments about my outfits. Thank you so much, Sarah. I will definitely be recommending you to my friends. And what an amazing weekend with Sarah. I learned so much from choosing my colours, my personality, wardrobe, hair, makeup and lots more. Sarah was a fantastic coach and host. We also had beautiful rooms with lots of surprises and the meals were scrumptious. Thank you, Sarah. I've made some lovely new friends. We had so much fun and I'm so happy with my new image. So without further delay, we definitely have to say hello, Sarah, and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Thank you, Ray. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Fine, now that we've finally got here. But my, <laughs> I'm wor what I'm worrying about is that I didn't put my phone, because I didn't realise, on flight mode. So I'm hoping my son rang me. So I said, I can't speak, I'm doing a, a live. So hopefully nobody will ring me, so I don't know what will happen. So, but thank you. Yes, it's taken us an hour, yeah, we'll... hasn't it? I know, I know, but there, there's a reason. There was a reason why it, why it took us um, an hour of an hour to, to get on here. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you all that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Sarah and I want to be part of this show. So please don't be shy. We will try and say hello to everyone during the show or if we aren't able to, we will we'll say hello once the show's um, finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can get further updates on all recordings. So Sarah, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how you came to be helping women choose the right colours and shapes? Well, I suppose it was about 12, well, it must be, I think it's 12 years ago now, um, my husband left me. Um, not only did he leave me, he left me for one of my very good friends. Mm. So that left me, left me in a really sort of a dark place for a couple of years because the children, I think Natalie was 17, the other two, 11 and 13. So you're not just looking at your own emotions, you're looking at your children's first and foremost. So it was a really hard time. And it left me in a dark place for a couple of years. And then one day a friend said, Sarah, we've got to get you on a dating agency. So it just sort of boosted me. So we did that and we had a bit of fun doing that. Um, but I knew that I've always had a passion for clothes. As a little girl, a young girl, I would sew. So I, I sew passionately now. So I've always got a sewing room because it's like my salvation in there. And 
I decided that, you know, putting on my clothes, putting on my makeup and my hair, how good I felt. And then a friend said to me, a, a friend of hers was opening a, a, a clothing shop and would I work in there a couple of days a week? She was opening it, so I said yes. And that's where, I, I suppose I just love people. So give me people any day. And I would style these ladies and then they'd say, they'd wait for me to come in and they'd say, Sarah, why don't you do this as a job? And I thought, oh, okay. I thought about it and I thought, I knew why, I didn't know thing, why things worked, but I knew they worked. So basically I spent some time looking at different training providers and I found one up in Warwick called First Impressions. And I went to a coffee morning there, and it was there that I trained. I, oh, for, I did quite a few weeks training there. Met a really good friend of mine, Rose. And it sort of escalated from there, really. So I was doing it in the shop, and then I just thought, I've just got to left there. I've really got to branch out. And I think because of my life, my experiences, that I have a lot to help women so I'm getting messages flipping up there but while I was doing the styling there was another lady there who had done NLP and I said what's that so she told me all about the NLP and how it helped her with her back problem with her holding on to emotions so I went and trained I did my di uh, diploma and my practitioner's course I'm not sure where I'm looking because I'm not sure where the, the camera is if I'm not looking completely <laughs> at you if I'm looking a bit worried. Um, so I did that for me. And then I just thought, this will help clients so much get rid of those negative beliefs. If they've got them, not everybody has. So I've incorporated the two together because it's not just about the clothes. It can often go so much deeper. I had one lady that wouldn't wear trousers because of and she was about 70, her father told her she had a big bottom when she was a little girl. And that was the sad, and she was a really pretty lady. And I just thought that was dreadful, you know, it was so sad. But, and she wasn't going to try trousers on. But I said, would you try them on for me? And I suppose she trusted me, so I had the right shape, the style, it suited her personality. Um, and she sort of turned around and she said, Oh, I like these. And then I said about the, the coaching I did. I did a little timeline process on her. And basically, she had a few tears. But then I spoke to her about four weeks later. And she loved everything she bought. And I always say, even if it's your basic top, you must love it because you won't wear it. Point is having it. But my question to her was, do you wear trousers? And she said all the time. So it's that part of my of what I do is as important to the styling. They sort of go hand in hand, really. So it's sort of stem from there. And yeah, I've had lots of little things that have happened where people have had these limiting beliefs and we've helped clear them. I mean, it's always a work in progress. We always have to work on ourselves. We don't mm. work on something and then just leave it. It, it. I've got a great Zen saying up on my fridge. And it says he knows not where he's going, for the ocean will decide. It's not the destination, the glory of the ride. So yes. there's, there's lots of things. It's just, and I suppose because of my experiences and that I've been able to help people, because I always say the best thing you can possibly have is to listen and not make judgment, because everybody is different completely and utterly different so it's supported in lots of different ways um so yes it's the styling i love and when you take somebody shopping and you're in your t i like to teach people i don't want to just tell them and then whoops another message yeah. i don't want to just it to me it's about teaching them empowering them so that they can go shopping on their own i have got clients i take shopping um and it's sadly because one of my ladies has just gone back to belgium to live so it's empowering them to, you know, if I go shopping, I know what colours are best for me. So my eyes will scan a shop. And then if I can't see my colours, I'll walk out because there's no point. Mm. You know, I mean, I'd love to wear that little black dress, but me with black, 
I look like a ghost. I look awful. If I've got a navy, it's better. I mean, if, if I had to wear black, and someone said, you've got to wear a black dress, then um, I would yeah, have a few little... rules. <laughs> yeah, I'd always have the low neck because I've got boobies. Um, and I would have gold jewellery and I would up the makeup and I might even do a bit of fake tan. So I, it, the contrast wasn't so strong and I didn't look so harsh. Mm. That's most probably what I would do. But um, so, yes, I'll scan. And then if I see my colours that I know harmonise with me, then I'll go and look at the clothing and then I'll look at its personality because every item of clothing we have represents who we are. It says something about us. And if the neckline is right and I love the top, then I'll try it on. So it is a process because... Some people will go into places like TK Maxx and they say, oh, my God, it's awful. Hate it. I just, it's just like a jumble sailor the way you're going. I said, but if you know the colours, so I will just scan. It is so easy. So it's empowering women to go out because most people only wear 20% of their wardrobe. And I always yeah. say, you could have, depending on your budget, you could have hundreds of pounds just wasted in your wardrobe you could have thousands and i say it would be nearer the thousand mark than the hundreds because you'd be amazed what people will buy they'll buy it on a whim i thought i loved it and i don't it, it's just amazing i mean i don't make any mistakes there'll always be some things i love more than others it just depends that mm. again will depend on the mood that you could be in so it will vary an awful lot and then you've got like the wardrobe I call it the wardrobe decluttering because it just declutters your mind as well I know in the past sometimes I'll have a clear out and I think I need to get rid of things because I can hang on to things um and I think no I've got to get rid of certain things and clear them out and I always put things in colours, I put my trousers in a certain way. So I can go to that wardrobe and I know everything in there is what I absolutely love. Some, obviously, if you've got like a ball gown, you're not going to be wearing that every day. But, you know, you've got some ideas. No, no, I've got some very nice dresses <laughs> that you don't wear every day. They're for great, special occasions. Great going to, can you imagine going to the supermarket in a ball gown? So there'll be lots of reasons. Um... So, yeah, I just find it declutters your mind. It's like in my home, I have to have my kitchen area decluttered because I can't work. I just get in a muddle about everything. So then, yes, and then obviously you're the personal shopping. And that's always, say, the fun part where you actually, everything that you've learned and you put into practice all comes together. And that is the really fun part. And the other part I, I do is the makeup and the hairdressing because my background originally I did hairdressing I was going to be a teacher end up hairdressing okay. don't ask me how I, because of my passion for sewing at those days you used to have classes I mean they don't have those now <laughs> no. um, <laughs> and it just happened that I I got a Saturday job up in Mayfair in Berkeley Square and I had the time very nice life. And they said, you should be doing this. So I ended up staying there. And I did. I had royalty there. It was Duchess of Kent. Uh, it, was just, it was just a fab really fabulous time. And so I empower women. I teach women how to blow dry their hair. Because you can go to the hairdressers. But nobody teaches you how to blow dry. Because obviously, years yeah. and years ago, people often used to go once a week to have their hair done. Whereas now people wash their hair every day which is not the best thing so yeah. I will teach them because I've got lots of tools and tricks and how to get maybe root lift because people think oh you'll put your hairbrush in there you'll get a bit of root lift like that that's not going to happen because they're your roots they're still flat it's about sorry about this demonstration ladies but I may as well tell you that okay. pushing that root the other way and putting the hairbrush around to get that root lift. And, and okay. this amazing hairdryer I've got called the Big Head Hairdryer. So I teach you 
and empower you so that you can have a go doing it. So at least you've got an idea. And I always say you've got, and like anything, you've got to keep practicing. You know, it's mm. not just going to happen overnight. Then with the makeup is, um, I've always done that. And I volunteer for the Look Good Feel. So these ladies get, it's at Maidstone Hospital, they get goodie bags. They're worth about 280 pounds. And they've got everything to cleanse, tone, the whole process. And again, they're empowered because we teach them how to get the illusion of eyebrows um, or yeah. eyelashes and teach them how to put eyebrows on without a great big line. So that's what we do on the makeup lesson. I show you that you do it so that you have got everything to go and replicate that look when you get home and there was one lady i had on a retreat because i do the styling retreats and she pops pictures up on facebook and she looks so different and i cut her hair and yeah often people get end up getting more than they expect because i get carried away <laughs> so that's sort of it. You, you know when you start you just can't stop you know um this lady she was coming and because there's usually I have two ladies but one lady couldn't come so I said come on let's go and do some personal shopping so I took her. I've got this fabulous place I go to I don't tell people what it is for me and everything is wholesale price but it's not your high street shops they're they're often German so you'll often find them in boutiques a friend got a Frank Lyman dress 60 pounds, I mean, she's or hers, it was 180. So, whew, it's the most wonderful place and it's done out beautifully, really lovely. So that's sort of a little bit what I do of the, the not coaching, I think it's about listening. And I remember when my mm. husband left, he said, Sarah, you're lovely to live, you're kind, you're caring but you don't need me. So that to me is it being another powerful thing I talk about because I always say to people, you should be with somebody because you want to be with them, not because you need them. So it's like your husband, your friends, the job that you may be in. So our conversation often diverts of other areas. I let them guide me where it wants to go. And sometimes it is just about listening. Sometimes you don't have to given it's not advice because it, i work with minds in my gut i know mm. when i where i can go they sort of guide you really so that's a little bit of how i work um so yeah, yeah I, I just just love it it's weird it's just yeah i meet people sometimes in the street and we start a cup of chat and one thing will lead to the other and they start telling me things. So it's that, it's that part of it. And the other passion is um, cooking and baking. And you know Annie Harold? You know Annie Harold? Public speaker? No. Oh, wonderful. Ali, one day we were doing Christmas videos here. And she said, Sarah, you need to go on um, the Great British Bake Off. And I said, oh, oh well bee. done. I did do the sewing bee. And I said, really? She said, well, yes. I said, oh, okay then. So I just thought, oh, let's just apply. So I, I knew I wasn't going to get anywhere because, I mean, their cakes that they do are just fantastic. I mean, I, but anyway, but that gave me my light bulb moment. That was the thing I thought, why don't I bring all my passions in together in one package? So that's why I started. I was going to move home. That was a long story. Oh, I've come as a notification again. Get rid of that. And all the children had left home. And I thought, why don't I do styling retreats? Because I love that nurturing coziness. That's why I call it. It's like very cozy. So I did all the yeah. two, two of the bedrooms. I didn't. I don't really. I have had three ladies. But it is better with two because then they get more attention. So we mm. do a full colour analysis and they get all the swatches. I do lots and lots of tip sheets. 
then they get the body shape and wardrobe personality and then we have and then I've they have um I always make homemade soup cake and tea in the afternoon we have dinner all you know all home cooked with wine and then so the day is quite structured but the evening Mm. they can go off into and have a lovely walk in Oxford. They can go and have a lovely bath with all the tropic products because they're one hundred percent natural and vegan. They can chat with me while I'm cooking dinner. They can do what they want. They might want to sit by the fire with an open fire, and it's governed by them. And the conversation yeah. is where they want to go because it's it's a long day. So, and then the next day it's breakfast, homemade bread. And then that's when we have, I blow dry their hair, teach them, and the makeup. So it's, it's lovely. I just love it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you, can, you can tell when, you, when you're talking, you know, you're, how passionate you are about doing this. And it's absolutely lovely that you're actually helping women to, um, you know, take that, take that power back, back to themselves. So, you know, if someone, so you were talking about colours. I mean, I, that's how I tend to shop. I'm, I'm not a shopper. Um, my clothes will last me for, I wear the same clothes for years and years because I, I don't shop. Would they say women have sh- loads of shoes? No, trust me, I don't. I'll wear my shoes until they finish because I'm not a shopper. But when I do go, I always go and look for colours. I, I don't I'm go and look I'm for just... styles. It's, it's always... So I'm just my yeah. a friend's I, come to live, and I'm just chewing her away because she thought I'd be finished by now. <laughs> <laughs> so you look for um, colour. Yes. Yeah, so so I, so, so I, t- I tend, and I will I will home for home for colours. You know, which is normally my greens, my reds, my blues, or my um, lilac-y purples. You know, because they're the the, the colours I, I tend to work with. The you're saying that a lot of people don't actually do that. They tend to go for more styles than looking for colours. Well, with colour-wise, often people will hide behind black. You know, I've had lots of clients wear it because obviously it makes them look slim. And obviously, I always say your eye is drawn to the lightest and the brightest colour. So yes, if it's a light, bright colour, you do stand out. But it's about illusions. When you're doing a body shape, I mean, I work with three different body shapes. You're completely straight up and down. And those ladies tend, when we get older, when it's so mature, and they put on weight, they will put it around their middle half, like around their, their, their trunk area. But they often have really good legs. I don't think I've ever failed me that one. And then, obviously, you could decide that some of them might have broader shoulders and it would be about bust. So I look at all the different elements, like the bust, mm. their sleeve lengths, if they've got a long or short neck, because it depends on the neckline. So there's a lot to take into consideration. And when you know, it just makes it easier. So the, the, the colour to me... I wouldn't say most important, because if some, somebody said to me once... Would be car, would, does colour take over from style or style from colour? So I said, if I had a dress, which was my perfect colour, which one of my best colours is coral, but it was like the worst shape ever on me, then no. But if it was black, mm. and even though it's not my colour at all, but it was very shaped and it was the most beautiful dress and really showed off my figure, and I had the right jewellery, then I'd, I'd take shape. So both, both are important, but it, it will depend. And it depends how you feel. I mean, I might say, advise you not to wear black, but if that person loves black and they feel really good, then wear it. But because if you feel good, at you'll wear it with confidence. You'll stand up and, and stand tall. So, mm. yeah, it's it's... It's it's interesting, fascinating. I have to say, when I learn, I was I was amazed. And I find when I do colour, especially when somebody's very fair skinned, they've got blue eyes and they've got that, and I put a black across them, and they go, oh my god, that's awful. Then I put a navy, 
as one of their neutrals. So there's yeah. over a million colours that we can wear, and we can wear about a quarter of them. So you know, you can be, you can sometimes be governed by what's in the shop, but there'll always be something out there. It's just knowing your style, your wardrobe personality. So yeah, there's a lot to um, think about, and I like with makeup. As we get older, our skin becomes more translucent and transparent and, and wrinkled things. So I always say our makeup should enhance us, not take us over. Mm. Because otherwise, unless you're a dramatic dresser with a dramatic character and you want to be big and bold, but usually as we get older, we want to make us look more radiant. So mm. that's giving you yeah. a little bit of an, an insight as to oh, much I could go on, you know, is how it affects our, mm -hmm. men, you know, our mental health because I went to, um, what was it, the Be Real campaign in the, in the Houses of Parliament and that's when it mm. triggered me off. What can I do? So I did a calendar for Look Good, Feel Better in 2016 okay. the calendar was for 2017 and it shows you 12 ladies who'd had or going through cancer treatment all wearing black actually i've got one somewhere all wearing black and no makeup and then what happens when you wear makeup and the right colors i mean it was just it was phenomenal but also it, they were smiling. So to me, yeah. when you smile and you feel it, that makes a big difference. And then somebody said, do a ball, Sarah. So I said, okay. Oh, my God, that was, that was, <laughs> it was fantastic. It was brilliant. But I needed a team of people. It was really, it was hard. But it raised about £13,000, so in total, with the calendar. So, yeah, it, oh, it, that. It, it, Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. You, yeah. I'm glad you touched on that because, yeah, I suppose um, it, it does make sense with with how you look, what you're wearing. Um, yeah. You know, if if I um, I'm going to do public speaking or something, you know, then I wear a I'll put a lipstick on, you know, because that sort of like gives me the confidence to to go out there. So working with um, women who are going through. Um, cancer, especially I would, I would have thought teenage girls, um, yeah. to, to build their self esteem up so that they're actually not frightened of going out. That that's a brilliant thing to do. Well, we always say to these ladies that <clears throat> we want them to, you know, often people will say, "Oh, you look tired today," or they if they say you don't look very well. Where somebody says you look good, it boosts you up. So you're trying mm. to give them, to make them feel good how they used to look and not feeling poorly and people feeling sorry for them. Some of these ladies, we had so much fun. We had one lady, she had us in hysterics. So, you know, you go there, I think it's once a month, and you come away and you just feel, oh, I can't describe it really, but you just, it's wonderful. Hold on a minute, stay there. Okay. <laughs> this. I think Sarah's going to get a photo. Let's have a look. Did that was my nickname. Okay. Blooming, I put it blooming through cancer. Wow. And that lady. And Amazing. No, that's that lady. And there she is now. Yeah. And there was oh no my air brushing. My photographer did it all for nothing. My website designer. Dave made a website. He said, you need a website. I, the people that gave me stuff was unbelievable. Oh, that, that, that's absolutely amazing. And the, and the transformation, um, you know, between, between the pictures, that, that you know, that, that's something that's really, 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 really special. Mm, yeah, no, it, it is. It's lovely. I love it. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that, that's... That, that's brilliant. So now I, do, as most people know watching, I do guided meditation and angel cards. And so each, um, and I would have asked this, I would have sorted that before we started, but 
Sarah, would you like me to do a guided medita meditation or draw an angel card for you and those watching? What would you like me to do? Angel card, please. Yeah, yeah. everyone always does angel cards. I like that. Uh, well, I, I can so, do some meditation, but yeah, the angel, angel cards. Okay, so um, if you're not aware, um, when I do angel cards, I do them for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. I work very much with the, with the present. So although I do past life regression, that is to help people heal their past issues so they can be fully present. And the same, even though I take people into their future lives, it's so they know where they're going so that they can be fully present. So everything I do is always back um, for the present. So they're not... Um, uh, predict, doing predictions, they're what you need to know no. at this moment in time. And the chances of the card will come out, then you'll go, Yeah, I know that. So, what does Sarah and everyone who's watching this live or at a later date need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Sarah and everyone who's watching this live need to know? So, let's see. Brilliant, Claude. Infinite abundance. Abundance is pouring into your life. So there you oh, go. Oh, that's lovely. So that is... So ah. yeah, it's um, it, it it it's it's absolutely it's absolutely absolutely brilliant. Um, it, it's basically saying that everything you've been doing is actually um now bringing in the abundance for in abundance for you and that doesn't necessarily mean financially um i was going to say that, abundance. that what fills for your heart that's the aware. exactly you know i it's, it's funny you're just saying to some ladies because there's some lady that may be watching and maybe gone through a similar situation you know what at the time was a real negative for me when andy left was my biggest positive Mm -hmm. This, you know, it's, I wouldn't have led, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I would, I have, I would have been physically and emotionally if I'd have stayed because of cer very certain yeah. circumstances. So I, I, I think it's letting people just to, the light at the end of the tunnel. There is that out there. And yeah, th th this, I feel as if I want to get out there, not just on one of the sliding side of things, but just. Yes, feel filling your heart because I remember someone said to me that you have to love yourself before you can others love others, and I think well, that's very conceited. But I know exactly what they mean now. It is, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. So, it, 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 you it, know, it right? is. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, but yeah, I, 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 I fell in love with myself all again. Um, so, so several years ago and yeah when, when you can you can totally love yourself and accept yourself and live from your heart and that everything around you just falls effortlessly into place so yes yeah, so, so 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 abundance yeah comes comes in many forms so yeah those that are watching this you know abundance is coming in whatever form that may be I um, mean it already started coming into into your life so just be aware of it because you because it might be coming in and you might not be seeing it as abundance, but abundance doesn't always mean money. But there is abundance coming into you um, at this moment in time. Um, so enjoy it when it comes in. It's like ooh, abundance. Oh, I do. I always, I always think you know just you just have to look outside, don't you? In the garden, the birds and things, and just think. Aren't I? I always think when people. People often said to me, like, I've had some clients sometimes that have been older about getting old. I said, change it around. They said, well, how can I change my age around? I said, no, change your thought process and think, aren't I lucky that I am the age I am? Because some people don't even get that age. So, yeah. you know, I've had a few, my friend's son died and I just think we've got to be grateful for every minute and every second and I know it's hard, it's not easy always, but that's, that's their learning lesson in life. Anyway, I'll stop talking yeah. now. Yeah. 
that, that's okay. Well, well Carla's coming um, to say, coming in the middle, we watch the replay. Brilliant, Carla. Um, yeah, when you watch the replay, you know, if you've got any comments or anything, do post them and Sarah and yeah, I will. will, will, will if them. anybody wants any tips, or if they want to send a picture of a dress and they're not sure about, I mean, obviously, I don't know their personality, but, you know, if it's if they've got a large bust and it's up here, I'd be saying, no, it's definitely the wrong neck length. So, yes, I mean, I don't mind. I, I just, yeah. A anything they want to you know, do, they can do. ask me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Sarah, yeah. before we wrap up the show, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? I think you've, it's about accepting who we are, accepting, either accepting our bodies or do, if you want to lose weight, to do something, then do something about it. Because we can procrastinate and, and, and not do these things. So if there's uh, this burning desire in you, I'm not on about style now, I'm not about life, just go and do mm. it. Don't, because all the time you think about it, you'll never, you know, you'll just be thinking, you're not doing. So go and live your life how you want to live your life. I always say, so we don't hurt anybody in the process. You've got to fulfill what your potential is. And, and most people, we live in a circle. And in that inner circle, is we get up, we get dressed, we breathe, we do all the things that we do. But it's on the outer circle that we actually live. And breaking from the inner circle to the outer circle, which stops us, is fear. But face that fear, because the more you do it, the more you live. You know, if somebody... Somebody sometimes asks me, will I do something? And I think, oh, heck, I'll, and it's out of my, my general comfort zone. I love challenges. Mm. I love to do things that, you know, but I'll always say yes and then fathom out how to do it afterwards. Because don't, because yeah. it's, it, it's, it's just give it a go. Give it a go. Yeah. And just love life mm. and love people. And just, I always think kindness kindness is a nice thing to do as well yeah oh that that's that's absolutely brilliant thank you um so that oh carla is saying for me it's more about feeling good about me and feeling healthy yeah absolutely all of these things go hand in hand don't they there's not one thing if you're happy and you love who you are you can't ask for anything more thank you carla no, no. Yes, thank you, Carla, um, for that. So I hope everyone, um, you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and the words of wisdom that Sarah has given you um, will help you um, get clear on your destiny. Um, now, Sarah, if people want to get hold of you, what is the best way of them doing that? How, um, you Facebook, uh, website, email, do, what's the do best way? through Facebook because at the moment, the website, it's a really old website. I mean, I said I've been doing this for 10 years um, and I'm rebranding the whole thing because all the retreats will go on there. I've, I'm working with the photographer. We've got videos going on there. Um, so most probably give me a message through Facebook. And if it, I always say, if you just want to chat, I'm not anyone that's, I, you know, as I said, I like people. So they can, yeah, any questions. But yes, Facebook at the moment is most probably the best way. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so if, if you can put your um, Facebook link in the post or I'll put it in the post um, yes, afterwards. Best so that... that if you wouldn't mind doing that. I'm, my, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm 61 and I'm not very good <laughs> at all the <laughs> computers bits and pieces and I should start panicking thinking help. <laughs> okay I, I i will do that i, I will i will post the most thing there so thank, thank you all for watching and i'd like to invite you to share this thank video so i'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and if you have reached that crossroads in your life um and need help finding your destiny then please reach out and connect with me um, as I'd love to um, arrange a free 20 to 30 minute call with you, video call with you, so that we can talk about how I may be able to help you um, get clear on your destiny. And if you're here and watching this and you're in the UK and you're in the Kent, Dartford area, then this Thursday um, between 2.30 and 5pm, I will be at the um, Fairfield Leisure Centre 
um, where they are raising money for children in need this week. And I will be offering um, two Future Life Progression sessions. You can choose one or two for 20 minutes for only £20. And £10 of that will actually go to um, children in need. So it's a huge, huge, oh, huge, huge, huge right. discount. So um, if you are in the Dartford area, please do come along. It's not just me that's um, doing therapies there that afternoon. There are lots of other people, a friend of mine, and Andy is going to be doing angelic Reiki and there's going to be sports massage, um, various other therapies. So, so please do come along and support children in need. And don't forget to join me next Monday, the 18th, where my guest will be Monique Hunt. So again, thank you everyone for watching and thank you so much, Sarah, for being my show. We finally got there in the end. We did for the hours to get there. <laughs> <laughs> we did it was it was worth it it was absolutely worth it, was it. it was brilliant thank talking you so to you. much Ray. it's bit, yeah it's great fun anyway but yes anyone wants to any information or tips or tricks of the trade happy to hand over bye. brilliant thank you very okay. much and i'll see you all soon bye